in this problem we want to calculate the acceleration field uh, given the properties of a fluid flow with this velocity field right here. So we want to know what the acceleration is of every particle everywhere all the time. Um, a shortcut uh, answer to this that is wrong would be to say, well, since the velocity here uh, does not depend on time, acceleration, which is the change in time of velocity, should also be zero. And so the wrong answer to this problem would be to say that the acceleration field uh, is zero, vector is zero everywhere all the time. This is not true, um, and I will show you why. Uh, to see why it's not so, you have to try to plot this vector field here. If you plot this vector field, you should get something that looks um, a little bit like this. You, you could try uh, plotting the vx component, so all the horizontal components of the velocity. So you would plot u as a function of x and y. And so you can see that u is only a function of x, does not change with y. So if you plot um, u here and you increase u progressively with, with x, it increases with increasing x like this. Whoop, let me try to increase this one, uh, perhaps also draw straight lines, something like this. It gets, it gets longer all the time, like this. Um, it does not change with y. So you have the same identical vectors uh, as a function of y. And so if you plot this whole thing like this, and you go further in the y direction, then you will see those vectors, the x components of those vectors does not change. Uh, but now if you plot uh, the y component, you see that the y component is a constant. Uh, minus something that increases with y. And so if you plot the y component of this, uh, you may have a long vector here, and this vector becomes a bit smaller here, and ultimately it becomes smaller and smaller, like this. Now the y component does not depend on x. Okay, so we have something like this uh, as a vector field. And something like that. Now, if you draw the sum of those two components, you get the velocity vector field, and you get something that would look like this. Something like this. Um, and looks something like that on the top. And from this, I think you can see, you can picture um, that the velocity is the same as a function of time. Uh, but certainly it's not the same as a function of space. And so if you drop a particle in there, so let's have a, let's have a, a pink red particle that you would drop in here and you would follow its trajectory as it follows the velocity field and you would be here the next time and then perhaps here the next time step and then here and then here and then here and so on and so forth. Uh, this particle here would have a velocity that changes with time. Um, the change in time of the velocity of that particle is its acceleration. And this is what we want to calculate. We want to not only calculate it for one particle, but we want to calculate it for all of the particles. And so what we want to calculate overall, uh, the acceleration field is the total time derivative of velocity. So what we want to calculate, let me switch to something a bit smaller, is this, the total time derivative of the velocity field. And the total time velocity, total time derivative of the velocity field is by definition written like this. Uh, it is the partial derivative of the velocity uh, field with respect to time, like this, plus an operator, which we call the advective operator, sometimes called also the convective operator. And this operator is the velocity dot the nabla operator. This is the convective operator. Um, and this convective operator is applied to the velocity field. This whole thing here is a shortcut. It's a shortcut for expressing the velocity in a slightly more tedious way, but perhaps something that's a bit clearer. And so this, let's reproduce this, this, um, this guy here as so, partial v over partial t. Uh, but then overall, over here, we have then here, we have u, the x component of velocity, multiplied by the change of the velocity field with respect to x plus v times the change with respect to y of the same velocity field. Let me perhaps rewrite this one so we're not confusing it with 
the nabla operator um, and then plus at the back here we have w uh, times the change over z of the velocity vector like this so this expression here at the bottom is what we want to calculate this is the acceleration field um, for our flow so let me move this perhaps up to here like so and let's try to calculate this in our case in our specific case we have the conditions that u the x component of the velocity field is uh, 2 plus 3x and we have v is 4 minus 3y like this this is completely arbitrary by the way there's no physical flow that would follow those rules but in this case we're interested in the mathematical side of the physics to understand what uh, this acceleration field is so we're not too worried about having an unrealistic flow field so let's calculate uh, let's calculate this overall let's take here um, let's take here the total time derivative this component here this expression here is actually three expressions it is a vector uh, expression so when we write it out we need to write three components perhaps let's split them out and then let's fill them in uh, we have over here uh, let me pick a better color something like this we have in green um, the total time derivative of velocity it is three components in x is going to be the change in time of the x component so partial of a partial t of u yes plus this component the x component of this part here and the x component of this will be here u multiplied by the change over x of the x component of v which is u and then here we have v multiplied by the change in y so v let me rewrite this plus here here like this v multiplied by the change in y of the x component of the velocity which is u and then we have w here multiplied by the change in z of the x component of v which is u like this so this is the x component of that expression here and now we add to this the y and the z components like so so this is the change in time plus u times the change in x oops that's too fast plus v times the change in y plus w times the change in z and the same thing again below for the z components so change over time plus u times the change in x plus v times the change in y plus w times the change in z like this and now i can fill in the terms and on the second line here we have all the y terms so all the components here will be v the y component of the velocity like this and on the bottom it will be w w w w and w here so these are the three components that we want to calculate when we say we want the acceleration field we want all the all those three equations so let me move those down a little bit like so and let's try to calculate them with the specific conditions that are highlighted here which is that u is 2 plus 3x and v is 4 minus 3y okay let's work it out let me move this a little bit higher i know this is moving behind the thumbnail but i need a little bit more space so um let's let's move to the left so i have a bit more space here we have the total time derivative oops wrong color total time derivative of the velocity or if you want the acceleration field uh, this is equal to the following the change in time of u is the change in time of this component it doesn't depend on time so it's zero um, plus u multiplied by the change in x of that component so let's take u which is 2 plus 3x here and let's multiply it by the partial derivative of this with respect to x which is just going to be 3 and then we add here v times the partial derivative of u with respect to y v is here and the partial derivative of u with respect to y is going to be zero so i have here zero and then i have here w 
which is going to be zero in our case, multiplied by the partial derivative of u with respect to z, which is also zero. So we have zero over here. All right, that's not too hard. We can see a lot of terms are going away. Let's take the second term now. The partial derivative with respect to time of v is zero u multiplied by the partial derivative of v with respect to x u is here but the partial derivative of v with respect to x is zero so this is going to be zero here plus v times the partial derivative of v with respect to y so v is here and the partial derivative of v with respect to y is going to be minus three so let's write it out v is four minus three y and i multiply this by minus three the partial derivative of v with respect to y. And then to this, I have to add w multiplied by partial derivative of v with respect to z, and both of those terms are zero. So that's another zero. And then we move on to the w line, to so the z component, um, and the change of zero with respect to time is zero. Here we have the change of zero with respect to x, it's also zero. Here we have the change of zero with respect to y is also zero. And you have you guessed already that the change of zero with respect to z is also zero. Like this. Yes, it's making sense now. So let's bring uh, this down to a simpler expression. We have on the, on the x component, we have, um, it's going to be 6 plus 9x here. And on the bottom, on the middle here, we're going to have mm, uh, minus 12 plus 9y. And on the bottom, of course, we have 0 here, like so. And this, my friends, is the acceleration field. Um, so this is the acceleration everywhere in space and in time inside this strange drawing that we did over there, which is which is above. So inside this field here that we have um, here, everywhere in space and in time, you take one particle, you drop it here at those coordinates x and those coordinates y here. When you bring those in into the acceleration field, you put values of x and y in here, and you're gonna land on the acceleration of that particle at that moment in time. So here, this is how you calculate the acceleration field um, of a fluid flow given its velocity field. 